Good morning and welcome to our service for Palm Sunday. You're very welcome to St John the Baptist Church here in Middleton, part of the Cloyne Union of Parishes, based here in beautiful East Cork. On Palm Sunday, our church community would usually gather to, what, to recall the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem on a donkey, when people welcomed him and greeted him enthusiastically, waving branches, and we would wave our palm crosses. But this year there will be no palm branches, no palm crosses. Instead, as we reflect on welcoming Jesus among us, for that is what the proud were doing, let us think of another sort of palm, one that we all have, the palms of our hands. After so much hand washing, our hands, our palms are not at their best. Still, we offer them up to God. Showing our palms is a sign of openness, of having nothing hidden, of being vulnerable. This is, in essence, how many people are feeling, not just those of us who are designated as vulnerable. We think, too, of the palms of the hands of healthcare workers, gloved were their own and their patients and their families' protection. In our open palms, in our gloved palms, in our vulnerableness. Be with us today and always, O God of love. Hosanna to the son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God our Saviour, whose son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms, our branches, our crosses, and our hands be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear him bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit now and forever amen our hymn give me oil in my life
who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we're going to hear the story of the Passion and death of Jesus as told in Matthew's Gospel. The clergy of our diocese have recorded a dramatised reading of it. Hear the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What would you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. Surely not I, Lord. Jesus answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even unto death. Remain here, and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, 
but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So, leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him, with a large crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, what are you here to do? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. All of this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, Two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserved death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I don't know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him. And she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crow, 
goes, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. They took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded him. Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas! Barabbas! Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified! Let him be crucified! Then he asked, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified! Let him be crucified! So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, Hail King, King of, of the Jews. Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, 
You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's Son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. And when the centurion and those with them, who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Along them, among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered for it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which had been hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that impostor said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people. He has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. This is the passion of the Lord. Our next hymn is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
gave us an example of your humble service. So guide our president, government and all the leaders of our world to serve their people with devotion. Help them in the difficult decisions that they are currently making to protect their people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give strength and patience to those who make great sacrifices in their care of others. We pray for all who are working in the front line of the crisis which we face. For doctors, nurses and healthcare workers. For guardi, delivery people and food producers. For those who supply and work in our shops and for all who look after the elderly in our society. Be with them as they go about their work and give them your protection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. During this time of disruption, help us to reflect on the way we live our lives and the priority we give to reading our Bibles and to talking with you in prayer. Help us to come closer to you through our experience of these difficult times. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, as you taught the people the truth about God, teach us your ways, reveal your love, and send us out with your spirit to serve others. Help us to open our eyes to the needs in our communities and to respond with your loving care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, be close to those who suffer. We pray for people who are in hospital today, that you would bring healing in their lives. We pray for the families of those who are in hospital and nursing homes, those who are unable to visit their loved ones. We pray that you will bring healing, strength and encouragement <clears throat> to all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holding up our palm crosses or looking at the palms of our hands, we pray. Help us to welcome you again into our hearts and homes with a joyful Hosanna, knowing that you are always with us in our joys and in our sorrows. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And pause for a moment. Gathering all our prayers together, we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. share together the peace. Now the union with Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Before the blessing, I would like to thank Mr. Ian Sexton, who has been playing the organ for us. 
it is so beautiful to have music to enliven our worship. Let us finish with a blessing. May the Father, who so loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring you by faith to his eternal life. Amen. Amen. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of his cross. Amen. Amen. May the Spirit who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory. Set your minds on life and peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. My song is Love Unknown. Love and serve the Lord. In the, In the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen.